Head office eventually got a real address in Sydney. Now we're in Singapore. Head office, this is actually our head office here. Uh, we're in nine offices, six countries, four continents. So uh, we have uh, data scientists in New York and uh, Berkeley, California, DevOps, this office in The Hague in the Netherlands, and engineers scattered around the world. We're not a large company, we're about 50 odd people. Uh, we have been larger, we have been smaller, uh, and we really progress through the time as technologies change, we react. You know, we used to be heavily into large engineering, you know, lots of mobile developers when mobile was hot back in 2010, even when Olivia and I have been working together for 11 years, uh, and we've had other companies. But Sakura is focused on three things cloud, data, and security. Cloud, in terms of uh, uh, openness, uh, we were an Amazon partner. Today, we're a Google Cloud partner. We are a Com partner, so we are actively in market, uh, working with Com on a daily basis. So, and I talk about our implementation. Security-wise, we do uh, cyber security, uh, digital forensics. Uh, you know, we we also help people like the Australian Federal Police track down cyber security criminals and things like that. So, uh, we do some pretty cool stuff. Today, we do somewhere between two hundred odd uh, penetration tests. Uh, across many of the banks that you guys use today as well. So uh, we're, we're quite active in the cybersecurity space. Um, in the API space, I, I don't think, as a modern technology company, there's, it's unlikely that you're not, not using APIs, right? You've got to be using APIs because that's what it's all about. Orchestration uh, has always been a common word and common concern. Uh, who's actively developing APIs today? Hands on code. Um, what's your biggest problem? Changing. Version. Versioning. Versioning? Yeah. Versioning. Uh, I, I find, uh, you know, multiple data sources, multiple clients the biggest issue. Having to redevelop authentication for multiple different clients, having to uh, distribute, keep it in sync and all sorts of stuff. So for me, when I first got into the, the, the con space, uh, I, I love to plug in uh, features and be able to just drop in uh, a new plugin very quickly and get it going. Uh, so that's what drew us out. Myself, sorry, I should introduce myself first. I'm actually the CTO of Um My background, geez, I graduated uni and got into engineering in 1991, so I've been an engineer since 1991. Um, I used to do some sessional lecturing at NTU, so I've been coming to Singapore for 20 years now. Uh, I've been living here currently this time for two years. Uh, I've been focused mainly on architecture, API development, and uh, security. I really have my thing. All right. Um, so, case studies. So, both these case studies are com based. Uh, we're currently working with a uh, machine learning backed uh, MAS regulated entity in the fintech space. Right? So, it's a small company. We're talking. Uh, tens of thousands of users, nothing particularly scary. Um, but what we did, uh, we have a machine learning investment bot in the background and visualization of that. So we had multiple clients. Uh, we're also white labeling the product. And so we had to white label it for uh, Thai-based banks. We've had to white label it now for American-based banks and all sorts of things. So uh, we have to deploy it quickly. We have to have multiple clients connecting uh, we also had multiple API backends that we had to control. So we had in-house Django, uh, Flask, Ruby and Rails uh, API backends, and having to pay as a startup, the company didn't want to reinvent forth every time, for example. So API Gateway um, was probably very you know, the best and fastest way to look at things. Uh, we had to deploy across private. Uh, data centers as well as public data centers as well. So we're currently deploying now to Amazon and we're also deploying to bank data centers. So we had to have a solution that could be deployable anywhere. Um, and we had to uh, be able to support different teams and have a common language. So for us, uh, and this client in particular, we ended up with a common solution. How we deployed this, uh, it was actually fairly simple. Uh, we just went with a basic Postgres deployment. Uh, anyone working currently today in Postgres? For me, yeah, cool, okay. For me, when you're looking at uh, scanning solution, Postgres 
is much harder to scale than, say, uh, Cassandra, right? Uh, both require good planning. So when you're looking at scalability, I think looking at Diffusion, having a scalability plan for growth is essential. And getting the data source right at the very, very beginning it is um, something that you need to do. For this company, because we have deployed many times fairly small deployments, having uh, an easy to manage Postgres database was very simple. So um, uh, we just went with uh, uh, our own, um, well, we, we're not using Lambda, we're not using Google Cloud deployment, um, sorry, our Cloud Launcher. Uh, so we've just gone and installed it, whacked it onto the back of um, our Postgres and deploying the correct uh, plugins that we need. Uh, the solution, I think I've already started to cover this. We had to reduce fragmentation. Uh, we delegated to an API manager in there, always in uh, Amazon Web Serv uh, Services. We wanted a single com instance. Uh, with DAWT, rate limiting, plot detection, calls, and uh, a few other things. So this is actually an Angular 4 front end, is the main UI here. Uh, but we also have uh, server consumption consumers. So we have edge based consumption, we also have some internal based API as well. Uh, second one, a quick piece that I want to cover, is a big advertising company with global reach. Uh, this company, Head office, I'm not sure, I think it's London, maybe New York. Uh, I know CIO, CTO of companies in New York, but uh, a lot of finance and things come out of London. They are the world's largest media company by billing, and the project's been run out of Singapore. Now, uh, they have offices in the US, UK, Hong Kong, Vietnam, Singapore. We've got thousands of users, and uh, we had to bring together a whole series of different APIs that were taking eight hours to process. So we actually got our data scientists involved and we had to find a solution again to uh, uh, bring those APIs together as well as scale it and uh, make sure things were performing well. We've had to go from eight hours processing time and their target is five seconds per run. So it's a big difference. So the millisecond delay is very concerning. Uh, we had many clients to consider. We had AmberJS, Ruby on Rails, uh, Python, Django, Microsoft Excel, even. Um, <coughs> many different APIs, different security patterns required. You know, we had to look at JWT, we had to look at the OAuth, uh, and things like that. So, uh, some public, some private. A lot of issues to concern and get. You went for eight hours in five seconds? Uh, we're currently down to two minutes. Uh, we have to get to five seconds. So uh, they, the original APIs uh, were written in Visual Basic.net, and we poured that all across to Python, uh, and we've written, custom written uh, the entire algorithms back in Python, and we've actually been able to scale and make Python performant in the back end, and uh, having a front API gateway that can perform well is essential to that problem. So, as uh, we go. Uh, so what do we do? We end up with uh, Amazon Web Services, multiple regions. I don't remember if it all work. But, um, three regions were primarily in scope. So we have here in Singapore, we have uh, the US, and we have uh, Germany. So in this, we'll actually use uh, Column mode, so we have the uh, uh, request coming in. We have column here. Uh, we have the center here as our data store. We can see sharp, that's a very, very scary tool. Rather than C sharp. C sharp. Then we have uh, all of our APIs at the back end. And that's basically replicated throughout the regions. So we have com, we have C star, all the different APIs, and again, Cassandra APIs. So Cassandra uses the CROSSA protocol, uh, com plus two. Uh, if you're used to RISTI or console or uh, things like that, same tech really in the back end. 
very little scale. So, multiple regions and zones, horizontally scaling across AWS regions, commonly stateless. Um, it handles location validation very well. So, uh, if you make a change in the configuration of the uh, it will refresh and change that, and that will replicate throughout all the different nodes and instances of COM and maintain that state. So, oh, sorry, maintain that memory uh, for a service experience. Uh, COM clustering, gossip protocol base. We are using Kubernetes. Uh, we are very, very active in uh, Kubernetes work. We do a lot of package management with Helm, if anyone's using Helm. Uh, we're also a uh, Cassandra partner, so, or data stack, so we do a lot of Cassandra work. Uh, some of our big clients in that space, we currently manage uh, a 20,000 node cluster with 80 million users. So that's our largest concern of production ring we have today. Um, so that's part of the solution that we're working through. Uh, lessons we've learned uh, doing these things, what work? Uh, it's features that count. Obviously, we don't want to rebuild the, the wheel every time. And if you're having multiple APIs and even bringing different APIs together, Having a, a nice, fast, scalable front end makes it easier. Uh, I found Conga documentation really easy to use. Uh, so I, I really value working with documentation. Amazon Web Services produces great documentation. Google are guilty of producing uh, some documentation that needs to work. Uh, get your analytics and reporting right. So making sure your logs are shipped uh, into your favorite reporting tool is absolutely essential. Uh, using your plugins. We had a quick slide earlier of the sorts of plugins out there, but pulling in a plugin is really simple, and uh, I really encourage you to get into it and have a look. If you want to look at launching uh, Kong yourself to play with, actually, I might finish this slide and I'll quickly launch a, a Kong instance to show how easy it is in, say, Google Cloud. Uh, also, I well, think of Kong. As a cool little middleware that dynamically has features when you need it. So, probably don't like it for middleware, but uh, to me, that's really where it's at, and it's really fast to get going. Uh, you can even build your own plugins, which we've discussed, uh, and you can get the entire lifecycle of the request and the response. Uh, you can do rewriting, you can do all sorts of really good stuff. Uh, Planet at scale, that's mainly around your data sources. You've got to pick the right data source from day one. Scanning Postgres is going to be a pain. Scanning Cassandra is a lot easier. And uh, get help early as well. So, you know, look at the enterprise, the enterprise support. Uh, you know, say, I'm about to, uh, today I'm working on a CA based API gateway product. And uh, that's from a big bank here in town. And uh, I'm not enjoying working with CA too much. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I like to work with um, that was a rapid presentation of that to be cognizant of time. Uh, but in terms of how easy it is to launch it, anyone here using Google Cloud? Anyone who know their existence? <laughs> yeah, great. All right, so Google Cloud has a Cloud Launcher product. You can easily go on here and just go Kong if I've typed it right. There's Kong there. Apologies for back to the audience. You literally launch. Here, you can pick number of instances, how big the disk, uh, where in the world you want it. It launches all of this. You just click launch, and you can have common plane in, a, in you know, ten minutes, and you'll be up and running. It's forty-eight per month. Yeah, forty-eight dollars per month. That's obviously not com going to com. That's going to Google yeah. uh, for the disks and the, and the VM instances, how are they? Uh, computer instances. Uh, and you know, on top of that, you have egress data and mm -hmm. things like that to consider. Uh, by default, this is a Bitnami version. By default, Bitnami um, will only take requests from 120.0.0.0.1. So you're going to do some instance forwarding or something uh, to work with it. Uh, you know, in production, you just file all that off. Uh, if you're just using the CLI, which is quite easy to work with. Uh, so I think of any other tips or tricks in that space, just launch it. It's really easy. Play with it. Look at the documentation. Work through it. There's some great YouTube clips as well out there. And uh, Kong holds a lot of webinars as well. So get yourself on one of those lists and have a look at what's going on. Um, 
there you go, that's two use cases. Small company wanting to scale and a massive, uh, the world's number one uh, media company booking more advertising. We're talking billions of dollars are going through from in terms of management. So, uh, very happy. Uh, any questions on the on those case studies? Cool. Are you guys using the Kong Enterprise right now? Uh, we've launched initially during uh, this period with Kong open source, but we're moving to Kong Enterprise. So this small startup, they probably wouldn't look to enterprise. I reckon they'll, they'll get enterprise in the like that March, April. Uh, the media company, uh, they'll be on enterprise, I think, by the end of December. Yeah, so it's coming pretty fast. Uh, and our question, look, it's, it's easy to work with and easy to play with and it's good. 